<sighs> Joseph, what are you doing? Thinking about going pro. The new UA support came out, and I want on the team. Doing what? They already have a basketball player and a baseball player and, you know, like, what would you do? I would do what I'm born to do. Professional Mario Party. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. As Yugists, sports can be a bit of a blind spot for us. Ask the exact text of any hand trap ever printed, and we can recite it perfectly, but ask us to name one basketball player not in Space Jam, and many of us come up short. That said, when these two mysterious worlds collide, the results can be magnificent. And given that COVID's looking permanent in America, this might be the only sports we get for the near future. Presenting UA. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll release the UA support we've all been aching for. UA Esportion. So here's the list and... I'll be honest with you, it's not often that you see a deck playing six field spells and still wanting more. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the deck breakdowns for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, so give it a look at www.ygopro. D-E-C-K dot com. Now let's fire up the grill and catch some sports. UA is an archetype from back when the power level was low enough that archetypes could afford to have fun, interesting gimmicks. Their monsters, mostly meaty, high-level men, can all be special summoned once per turn by returning a different UA to the hand, tagging out, as it were. Their monsters were surprisingly competent for their 2015 release and included Omni Negators, Special Summon Floodgates, and the star of the show, UA Dreadnought Dunker. When this playmaker, uh, not to be confused with UA Playmaker, who sucks, suited up with his signature spell, UA Powered Jersey, he could pierce through even the most dirtily defense position Dantes for some awesome OTKs. Unfortunately, the archetype has a serious lack of starters. Only one non-tribute monster meant that if their star forward was injured, they'd be back on the bench. Until now, UA has received three absolutely incredible new pieces of support in Phantom Rage, and a bunch of really bad ones I won't mention. UA Playing Manager is a free special summon who enables the perfect ace blockbacker setup on the play and pops cards on the draw. UA Libero Spiker is a second normal summon who can tag out a quick effect speed alongside a chunky UA for one from deck. And UA Hyper Stadium is the modern field spell the deck deserves. It searches on activation and rewards you for playing the old stadium by turning it into a double summon. Ideally, the deck will end on an Omni Negate and a special summon Floodgate when going first, and a Dunkster wearing as many shirts as his Herculean frame will allow when going second. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the Sportsman. Playing Manager is first, followed by Dunker, the OTK Machine, Rebounder, the Extender, Blockbacker and Perfect Ace, the Defensive Options, one Midfielder and three Spiker, the Starting Line, and three Nibiru and three Ghost Ogre. Listen, I don't like them either, but their contracts are airtight. For spells, we're on three Extravagance, three UA Signing Deal, three Hyper Stadium, three Normal Stadium, Terraforming, Set Rotation, Rota, 3 UA Powered Jersey, 3 Foolish Burial Goods for a UA Penalty Box, and 3 Infinite Impermanence. The extra's just an extravagance board with 4s and some links that we'll never summon. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against the new Raid Raptor deck playing Raider's Knight, which realistically is just an OTK machine. This showcases what the deck is capable of doing going first. We're going to lead with the copy of Pot of Extravagance, drawing two cards off the top of our deck. Always like seeing this card, but usually on its own. We draw another Hyper Stadium, so we'll activate one of them, and then reveal the stadium in hand to get an extra normal summon. Fun fact, Stadium Search Effect is not a once per turn. After all, why would it be? It's not like you can normal summon twice. We get to go into both the Perfect Ace and the Blockbacker on the set up, so I'm pretty happy. We'll pass it back to our opponent and see what they can accomplish. They're going to lead with a copy of Vanishing Lanius, followed by Fuzzy Lanius. They'll activate Raid Raptor Nest, which is terrible news for me. Afterwards, they're going to activate the effect of Heal Eagle in hand before Link summoning a Wise Tricks. Unfortunately, they've arranged the chain in a way that I can't negate it with Perfect Ace, and of course, its position cannot be changed. Unfortunately for our opponent, four Strixes can, so we'll negate its effects with Blockbacker, and they'll summon another couple of Raid Raptors before activating four Strix to prompt the Wise. Great news, 
as we can prevent the rum from making its way to the field by using perfect ace here. Our opponent will go into Raider's Knight and Stranger Falcon, and while we lose our perfect ace, we still have monsters on our side of the field and life points to work with. We'll fire off this pot of extravagance again, and now it's time to go for the OTK. We'll activate Foolish Burial Goods and then Penalty Boxes effect for a second shirt to hand. We'll activate Signing Deal for a Playing Manager, still a little afraid of that set card. We're going to return it to hand for Libero Spiker, triggering the Playing Manager so I can activate its effect after it's special summoned. We'll destroy that last remaining set card, which is a Twin Twisters and would have mattered immensely. We'll special summon a Dreadnought Dunker after searching it, equipping it with two shirts, and unfortunately for our opponent, even through the card in hand, this is going to be well over lethal. Our second match is up against Crusadia Dragma, and just as the first game proved what this deck can put up on the play, this game showcases how hard we can dunk on the draw. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Formund Skipper, revealing a Regulex in the extra deck so they can link summon a Magius and trigger its effect. They'll go for a Parallel Exceeded Hand before special summoning a Reclusia, triggering Magius for a Draco, and link summoning a Regulex. They'll special summon the Exceed from Hand, followed by an Exceed from Deck, after resolving the effect of Regulex for a Crawler of all things, and overlaying for a Rathlesia. Okay, we can no longer interact. They'll trigger the effect of Draco after making Equimax and activate Disciples of the Nadir for a copy of, you guessed it, Maximus. They're going to go ahead and summon the Maximus Maximus from hand, and then trigger its effect, which prompts an infinite impermanence from us. Unfortunately, Equimax is a heck of a check against cards like that. They'll activate Bastard at end step for a Fleur de Lis and pass it back to me. It's looking grim, but I think we can still do it. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, unsurprisingly. All we have to do is get rid of that Link monster, and we should be in the clear. Our opponent's going to flip Shadow Hook as soon as we activate Pot of Extravagance, so we have one special summon with which to accomplish it. We'll normal summon a Libero Spiker and go into a Dunker, proceeding to battle phase, piercing over the Crawler, and destroying the Equimax. Okay, so far so good. We'll set one card and pass it back to our opponent. They're going to, well, activate Fleur de Lis. Uh, they're going to negate the effect of our Dreadnought Dunker and proceed to battle phase, but unfortunately our set card is Penalty Box, which will banish that Fleur de Lis for two turns. In main phase two, they'll activate another copy of Disciples of the Nadir, Normal Summon, and Ecclesia, and unfortunately for them, pass. They've got a Fleur de Lis, but not much else. We're going to Normal Summon a copy of Libero Spiker and proceed to battle phase, walking over this window and destroying the Rathlesia. After that, we'll walk over the Ecclesia. In main phase two, we can Special Summon a Perfect Ace and a Playing Manager in order to destroy that Maximus, and suddenly our opponent's board is looking extremely weak. We can activate Signing Deal to get Blockbacker into rotation as well, and with Blockbacker, Perfect Ace, and Libero Spiker, our opponent concedes to our line. So, it's time for Game 3, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Numeron Eldritch, and if you haven't encountered this deck yet, don't worry, you will. We are going first, so let's show our opponent what we're capable of. We'll lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, Eat an Ash, and... Oh, that's pretty much it, huh? Well, we can end on one negate. We'll normal summon a copy of Libero Spiker, go into a perfect ace, and pass it back. As they activate the Cursed Eldland, we are now a sitting duck. I can't let it resolve. They're going to activate the effect of Eldlich in hand, and... Yeah, there goes the perfect ace. In Graveyard, they're going to activate the effect of White Eldlixir in order to set a Hakero, special summon the Eldlich, and get in for 35. Now, our monsters cap out at about 2,500 attack. This is going to be difficult. For turn, we draw... Okay, that's pretty much the best remaining draw in our deck. Our opponent's going to chain a Conquistador to the summon of Libero Spiker. They will get to eat the Playing Manager, but we do still have a UA. Unfortunately, that is a cold comfort because they are filling the board. Okay, well, they drew a Numeron Network, not particularly good when your board is already full. They're going to activate the Graveyard Effect of White Destiny to set a Conquistador, but I doubt it will matter. They'll go to Battle Phase, getting in for... Wait, this isn't lethal. Hey, we could... Oh, yeah, okay. Well, time to go to Game 2. So, it's time for game two, and... <laughs> oh, God. I decided to throw caution to the winds and allow my opponent to go first, and boy, have I been rewarded. This is the kind of hand I draw when I play this deck. They're going to lead with a copy of Numeron Wall, setting a network and sending a calling from Graveyard to summon three gates and overlay for Zexel. Have you seen this play before? Unfortunately for our opponent, not only do we have the infinite impermanence, Zexel has zero defense. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, and while they have a couple of hand traps, none of them are Ash Blossom. Next, we'll fire off a Terraforming for a normal stadium. We'll activate Hyper Stadium, and then activate the second effect of Hyper Stadium, revealing our normal stadium, so we can get some searches later. We're going to activate Foolish Burial Goods in order to send a UA Penalty Box, and banish the Penalty Box for a Shirt. Next, we'll set the Stadium, and proceed to Normal Summon. We'll Normal Summon a Libero Spiker. Afterwards, we'll Normal Summon a copy of Midfield. Fielder. This should be game. We'll tag into a perfect ace and then activate the effective stadium. 
they will Veiler the Perfect Ace, will Special Summon a Playing Manager and activate its effect. They activate the second Veiler. Ooh, he was not actually a threat. From here, we can tag into Blockbacker and Dreadnought Dunker, equipping it with the Power Jersey, and God, I hope this works the way I want. We'll do 7,000 and... Unfortunately, it doesn't. Blockbacker doesn't negate the effect of wall. The battle phase will end, and we'll have to tag into a spiker and a midfielder doing some kind of complicated playmaking in order to enable access to Perfect Ace next turn. They'll activate wall, we'll chain spiker, they'll activate ash, which is still not that big of a deal. At res, we can activate midfielder to tag in a Perfect Ace, which triggers from our hand the effect of playing manager, destroying the Numeron wall. This means even when they activate the third one, we can still negate with Perfect Ace. That's the end of the game. Now it's time to rub some salt into the wound. We'll activate Pot of Extravagance on our turn, and... Oh, okay, I can't be. Um, karma is a thing, and I am afraid of it. So it's time for that all-important Game 3, and... Okay, we could do this. This isn't a particularly explosive open for our opponent, and they are going first. Maybe? They're going to lead with a copy of Eldlixer of Black Awakening to get an Eldlich the Golden Lord. Set 3 and pass. That's about as good as we could have hoped for. Okay, we'll lead with a Rota, and... Oh my god, we don't have a normal summon. Okay, we can still get one through set rotation, and... Oh, no. Oh, I guess we are making negated Dunker pass. That's terrible news. Well, this deck's old weakness coming back to bite it as our opponent sets up, banishing the white Eldlixer in Graveyard for a Hakketo and the black Eldlixer for a Conquistador. They'll crash into our monster and then tag back into Eldlich from the Graveyard before passing it back. It's got to be something fantastic off the top, and while that fits the bill, I don't think it's likely this Hyper Stadium is going to resolve in the face of a Conquistador. Okay, well, we tried. So we're back with the deck, and while it lost to Lich, it beat the Numeron portion. Truly a Rudy moment. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the deck is so dumb. It's so dumb and I love it. Finally, Yu-Gi-Oh! gets the himbo representation it deserves. Everything this deck does is in service of big number go up. Two, the deck is mega consistent. Every card searches for every other card. Realistically, the only hand trap you've got to be on the lookout for is Droll and Lockbird. And three, it's nice, after 10,000 waifu archetypes in a row, to finally be graced with these most excellent husbandos. And the cons. One, the deck's predictable. It only really does one or two things, and both of them are easily countered by clever usage of Conquistador. Two, you can't really blind second. Obviously, you want to OTK, but aside from Lightning Storm, all the great equalizers cost you your normal summon or your battle phase. And three, sadly, they're just not good enough. Decks were different in Duelist Alliance, and this one was only semi-playable then. The new support resolves their 2015 problem, but now they've got more of them. They just can't keep up with modern archetypes. All in all, it's a good, cheap deck with extremely linear play and powerful payoffs. It's not up to speed with the modern metagame, but it's a fantastic point of entry for any new player looking to clutch a couple of rounds at Locals. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Angel Ferox, Candyman, Crispy, Innercrest, Mike Carlotti, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amida Elefandi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blue Boy, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Philarup, Dunk Coro, Distrin Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwang, FUTR, Gustavo Secon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Gel Du Radeau, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaibacorp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurukaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meds for Feds, Michael Oskvark, Miyuna Arad Rashi, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro Yugi Dad, Pro FP2, Sam Soon, Second Shane Meadow Edits Pronga, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchewski, Zach McKee, Blah, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yuki A. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time!